Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now, before I start this video, I want to thank everybody who voted on my community tab poll and the poll results are in and the majority of you wanted to see a Fire Stick TV video closely followed by an Android TV video. So I'm going to do the sensible thing and do an Android TV video. And you're going to love this one because it's all about aesthetics on your Android TV home screen. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean an Android TV launcher and just not any old Android TV launcher. It's probably one of the best Android TV launchers I've seen. And best of all, it's free. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Now I'm going to demonstrate this TV launcher on my Nvidia Shield TV Pro, but it will work on any Android TV device. So we've all seen this Android TV home screen in one form or another on our Android devices. It's functional, but slow and clunky with its ads on the home screen. And worst of all, it can get very cluttered, making it difficult to find what you're looking for. And the more you use it, the more cluttered it becomes and the more you hate it because of that, until you get to the point that you stop using the device. Now this new TV launcher solves all of those problems and best of all, there's no ads. So I'm going to go through all the features of this new TV launcher and at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to install and how to get it. Okay, once you install this TV launcher, this is the home screen you're greeted with and straight away we can see it's a plain Jane affair and I mean that in a good way because I can see clearly all the apps I've got without any clutter or ads. Now don't worry, there is a lot of settings we can change here. We can change the background, make it look a bit more spicy. But let's go through the basics first. So what we have here is all our applications neatly arranged under different subheadings. So clearly you can see that we've got two subheadings at the moment, but we can change that and add as many subheadings as we want. And we do that by going into the settings menu, which is the cog on the top right hand corner. So we've got a lot of settings here we can use to personalize our TV home screen. But the first thing I'm going to do is turn off crash reporting and analytics reporting. And it's simple enough to do, just hover over and click. So what this basically does is save some resources on your CPU. It ensures it's not constantly working away on reports in the background. Okay, so the first of the settings we're going to look at is applications. And we've got three sections here. We've got TV applications, non-TV applications and hidden applications. Okay, so let's start with TV applications. Now this is basically all your applications on your device. And from here, you can basically manage all your apps in one place. Clicking on the information icon will give you the following submenu. And from here, we can open the app, we can hide the app. And if you do choose to hide the app from here, it will automatically appear in the hidden menu up top. We've also got access to the app info here, where we can force stop the app, uninstall the app, find out how much space it's taking up on your device, clear data and cache, and we can turn off its notifications. We can also check up on the permissions it's been granted and remove as desired. So as an example, if I choose to hide this app, you'll see it appear in the hidden menu. So I've clicked on the hidden icon, and if I go over to the hidden menu, here it is. Okay, back on the TV applications menu, we've got this plus icon, which lets you quickly organize your apps by putting them into folders which will show up on your home screen as categories. Now if we head on back to the main menu up top, we can actually organize our categories and even create new categories for our apps. Organizing is straightforward, we just click on the downward arrow or the upward arrow and you'll see it instantly change up on the home screen. Now creating a new category is just as easy, we just click on the plus add category icon and you'll get the following window pop up asking you to name this new category and I'm going to call this one games, simply OK that, and boom, we've got a games category. And on the left here, you can see it pop up on the screen. Now to fill this new games category up, simply go up one menu to applications, and in TV applications, next to each app, there's a plus sign, just click on that, and you'll get the option to add it to your new games folder. So I'm going to go ahead and add all my games to this folder, and you'll see on the right side, it's getting populated. Now what you will notice is that these app icons are coming up pretty small, but don't worry, we can change how they look, make them bigger or even smaller. And to be honest, I prefer smaller as you can get more in, which means you're not scrolling constantly to find what you're looking for. Now we can also customize what's in each of these categories by simply pressing on the cog next to them. And you'll see we get options to sort the contents manually or alphabetically. And we can choose to arrange the apps in the category by row or by grid format. Personally, I prefer the grid format as you get a lot more apps in the screen. But if you do choose row, you can change the height of the row. And the smaller the row height is, the more you're going to see on screen. Now if I change it to grid view, you can see the icons are even smaller and you can even change the number of columns. As an example, to show you what you can do, I'll go into non-TV applications, change type to grid and change the column count to 10. And instantly you can see we're at the smallest size and the most on screen. Okay, so that's done. Now we can move on to my favorite part of this TV launcher and that's wallpapers. So currently we've got a plain Jane background, but we can change that. 
Just scroll down to wallpapers and here we've got three options, unsplash, gradient and custom. Let's start with the first one, unsplash. Now we've got different types of wallpaper we can choose from here. Landscape, abstract, minimal, texture, architecture, plant, technology, animal and it goes on. Now this is the cool bit, if you highlight the category you want and click on it, you'll get a random wallpaper from that category. There's no need to delve into settings to download wallpapers, it's all instantly done at the click of a button. And if you're bored of a particular wallpaper, it's easy enough to change. Just head on back to Unsplash, select the category you want, click on it and it will change the background. And if you keep on clicking on the same category, it'll just keep on swapping through the wallpapers. You've basically got an unlimited supply of backgrounds at your fingertips. Give it a go, just keep on clicking on the same category and you're going to go through some awesome backgrounds. But wait, there's even more, you can actually search for backgrounds. Head on over to the top under the search icon and just enter a keyword of what you're looking for. So I'm going to search for tiger. Once you're done typing, press the enter. And there you go guys, instant tigers. So I like the look of this one and it's instantly going to go into my background. Pretty cool feature if I don't say so myself. Now of course we can customise your home screen even more. Go back there and we can look under wallpaper. We've got gradients. Select it and we get a choice of gradients to choose from. Again, simply choose the one you're interested in and it will appear on your background. So if you're after that zen look, these are the ones you want to look at. Now if you still can't find what you're looking for after looking through all those choices, you can of course choose your own background. Head on back to wallpapers and then scroll down to custom and it will open a file explorer where you can navigate to where you keep your pictures and just basically select them. Okay so down below from wallpapers we can select our Android settings and this is basically your bog standard Android settings. So if you were afraid you're going to lose these settings by using this launcher, you're not. You've also still got access to all your Nvidia Shield TV settings, including all the AI enhancement modes. Okay, so getting this Android launcher is a doddle. Simply go to your Google Play Store and go to the search option and search for F Launcher. That's F L A U N C H E R. And just click to install. Now it's not a large file, so it shouldn't take too long to install. And once it's done downloading and installing, just click on open and you'll get the splash screen and it'll load straight in. Now the cool thing about this launcher is you basically treat it like any other app. And what I mean by that is if you click on the home button on your remote, it'll go straight back to your default Android home screen. And when you want to go back to F Launcher, just find it in your apps and select it and you'll go straight into F Launcher mode. How cool is that? So while I'm here, I'll go through some of these non-TV applications. And the first one is the Android TV remote service. We've also got the very useful file explorer. And then we've got something called input viewer. I'm not really sure exactly what this is. If any of you watching do know what this is, please do leave a comment down below. Now this is a pretty handy one. It's a shield remote locator. Just clicking on it will make the remote control beep. So if you have lost it down the sofa, you'll find it easily. Anyway guys, if you found this video helpful, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more great reviews coming soon. And I'll see you all in the next one.